Hi, and welcome to Food for Thought Thursday. Well, today's going to be a real treat. We are going live to Tucson, Arizona, where I interviewed a friend of mine, Mike Wilhelm, where he has an organic garden in his backyard. Mike is following in his father's footsteps, who was doing organic gardening over 50 years ago in West Virginia. Now, we're going to be in his backyard, uh, where you'll get to see Mike uh, gather rainwater and mulch and see his lovely, healthy, pesticide-free organic garden. I hope you enjoy this and I hope it will encourage you to do a little gardening yourself, whether it's something like planting tomatoes or growing an herb garden or start small, um, possibly grow some sprouts on your kitchen counter. It's extremely rewarding, it's very healthy and there's nothing like picking your own fresh tomato or carrot right from your garden. Enjoy this video, have a great weekend everybody and I'll talk to you next Thursday. Thanks, Karen. I just want to show you a little bit about the gardening techniques we're using here in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, we'll start with the seedlings first that I put in a hotbed. And right now we've got a lot of big sunflowers coming up, but in between these sunflowers, we have the tomato plants. There's four different varieties in this little box that I put in seeds in here. And then we've got some eggplants right here growing. And after about another two weeks here, we'll take all this plant box out and put these plants in this garden. It was time for, this is a winter garden, and right now we're into early part of April, which everything there is just about done. And we can go in here and dig around and I'll show you some of the stuff. But the reason I put these cages in here and these are on all the gardens is to keep the javelin away, uh, rabbits, and any other predators, birds and stuff like that to keep from getting in here. And also I'm using some sunshade because right now this winter garden is getting a little too much sun. But eventually I'll be taking this off and putting those plants in here. But I'll show you some of the stuff that we have growing right now. different variety of lettuce right here. This is all carrots. <laughs> They're kind of going wild and crazy, but if you look right down in here, we can go down in here and I can kind of root around. And we can start pulling some up and you can tell that they're about ready to, to go to eat. That's a mi mixture of carrots and then over here, what we got going on is some spinach through here and then this is my first year of doing potatoes and I'll dig some of these up but this right here is garlic all this and there and then these are the potato plants that's kind of going on their way out but I'll just kind of dig down here and show you what what's going on with them there's one And these are some red ones. Another red one. I could let them go for a little longer, but really, by the looks of these green plants, the sun's just too intense. And um, we'll probably end up digging the rest of these out today. Now we come to what I've been doing for a few years now. And in the desert, it makes sense is we've been harvesting water off one roof of the house. And I could do a lot of different roofs, but right now I'm just collecting off one roof. This tank will hold 400 gallons of water. And as you can see, the gutter sisters, system's collecting it. If there's filters on each rim to keep the debris out of here. I also put a pressurizer on it, but I've never used it yet because it's not needed, where I could pressurize this tank and then it could be spread it evenly wherever I want. But tell you the truth, when you store 400 gallons of water at this height, coming out the hose, that much gravity feed is plenty to do any watering. And what I did here is, it's real important here in the desert with the sun we've got to UV proof the tank. So I painted a matching color of the house onto this to keep the sun from coming in because what happens is 
with UV uh, light coming in, you'll create algae and it'll be the water will get real green and then you'll have to do some kind of chemicals which I don't really want to do. And what I did is I put a piece of tape down for the increments of gallons here so that I can visually inspect to see where I am at the year with my water levels. And um, then I kind of mark it with a chalk of what date is full and then sometimes I get way down here and see what date it is and so on and so on. What I have did here with this tank, I used to use it in my gardens, but right now I put a pre-filter on it and this water is all gravity fed into the chicken pen for the chickens. So they'll get natural rainwater that's been filtered and then there's a float valve in the chicken coop that automatically goes up and down when more water is wanted, but this is about like 80 gallons of water that those chickens will have whenever they want it. Okay, now we're going to do what's known as a manure tea, which we've used some of the compost with manure in it. And then I take some rainwater, which I've been storing from the roof collection off the roof, and I put it in a five gallon bucket. And then the manure and the compost goes in just like a little strainer basket like this with the rainwater and I let it set in there for at least one week and then this bucket goes on one garden and then I'll do another batch let it set for a week goes in the second garden and the third garden so this really makes a gardener look like he knows what he's doing the other part of water in the house that I've really been trying to think about what I want to do. We're in a county here and we do have a septic system and there's about 35 gallons of water used in each laundry that each time we run that machine I, there's 35 gallons of water that we're dumping back in the septic system. I disconnected that and I figured I'd run a ABS pipe over here, collect it in five gallon buckets and then I put it in this 35 gallon container and then I kind of mobily take this machine to any of the desert plants and feed them that 35 gallon of water instead of dumping it back in my septic where I got to pay somebody to dump it out. So it's just one way and I also the laundry soap is important what you use and we don't use bleach whenever we're putting it to the plants. Um, the bleach we kind of let go through and filter down the channels of the water. That thing there, uh, that tree will take about any abuse it can and so whenever we don't think about collecting the water for laundry, I kind of make it a little uh, project for me to do because I, like, I love to just come out here and take this water, put it in here, drive this vehicle all around the plants and give us some of that water. But basically if we don't think about it then it's gravity fed down here to feed this oleander bush and also this uh, African sumac tree will take about any kind of water that you give it because once the water goes in the soil then soil kind of filters out a lot of the laundry soap and a lot of the bleach.